Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. It is Thursday, November 4th, 2021, and I'm back with a uh, restor restoration video. Uh, a couple of skillets that have been in my lye bath for quite a while now. Um, this one here I picked up at a thrift shop, believe it or not. I think I paid four bucks for it. This is a, if you can see it there, a Chicago uh, foundry or Chicago hardware foundry. I can never get that right. Um, it's a hammered skillet. They're one of the few that make this design. And here's the handle. Let me move the water out of the way. And there's a bunch of rust in there. It's been soaking in the lye bath now for several months. I've just been busy. I didn't feel like doing it this summer. We had a hot summer. It was rainy summer and I didn't really feel like restoring anything, but it's a nice crispy day out there. So why not? Anyway, this one I'm going to rinse out and use my little uh, Brillo pad. I love these. It's got, you can see, it's got a little bit of pink uh, soap, rust-resistant soap on it. Brillo pads are fabulous to rinse these guys out. And uh, so that one's there. And then we also have the um, lodge I just picked up. And this is going to be for me. It is a lodge, and I, from my research, and thanks to some of the people that commented on that video, you can see it there, I'll hold it down. It's more of a modern day lodge, but I like it because it's a number eight with the assist handle, and I don't have that, and this is, I use that size to bake a lot, and I put in the oven, it's so handy to have the assist handle as well. It was made probably somewhere between 1998 and 2011, uh, when they started putting, um, I think they started, they did something different with the logo after that year. Put it, I think made in the USA or something like that. This just has the old lodge, or the modern lodge logo uh, with the egg in there. You can't see it now, it's so dark. But I'm going to rinse these guys out. And we're going to just show you how I clean them up here. And right now, I'm just going to rinse it out. It's got a lot of rust on there. And... And this is so messy. I usually don't do it in the kitchen sink, but I've got a little base in here. I can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a good scrub. And if you can see there, it is, the lighting isn't the greatest. I like to do it downstairs in my, uh, my laundry room, but it's just there's a lot of stuff down there right now, doing lots of laundry, and so I'd rather just do it here and show you. I'm um, rinsing off, rinsing out this pan. So I did the back, and I'm going to do the inside. Get all that rust off of there. And well, the camera shut off on me, so once in a while it acts up. Don't like that, so I had to fid fiddle with it for a little bit and get it going again. So we are just giving this a good scrubbing. And what I'll probably do with this is I will soak it in my vinegar bath. It's 50-50 cleaning vinegar uh, with water. And I'll put it in there probably for a half an hour or so and then take it out and rinse it out. And we're going to go ahead and we're getting a lot of the rust out. Why? Sometimes we'll remove the rust right along with the old seasoning. They say the lye only works on the old seasoning, but it's looking pretty good. Looking real good. And this one, I'm probably not going to keep. I've got enough number fives. This one will be sold. Beautiful pan. It's nice thin sidewalls. It appears to be okay. No cracks or anything like that. And um, anyway, so that we're going to go ahead and soak it in the vinegar bath. downstairs. So I'm going to set it aside for right now on the other side of the sink and we're going to do the same thing on this uh, lodge. Dump the water out. I just don't like scraping up my sink with this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and do this one.
Okay guys, that is done, and I'm gonna go ahead and put these back in my drip pan. It's a plastic seven quart drip pan that I got at the dollar store for a dollar. <laughs> And this is great for transporting cast iron from the lye bath to the vinegar bath and so forth. And it keeps the drippings off the carpet. I usually don't bring it in the house this way, but it's kind of chilly out there today. But I'm going to put them in the, in the uh, vinegar bath and I'll be back once I've gotten them stripped. But I, I, sometimes I just go back and forth between the vinegar bath and the lye bath until I get them just right. And then that's when I go and season them. So. That's what I do. I just go back and forth. I'm very patient about it. And But you can leave the cast iron unattended in the lye bath for a long time, months, maybe even a year. I mean, it's not going to cause any damage, but the vinegar bath, you got to watch it real close. Start out at 15-minute intervals, a half an hour, depending on how much stuff needs to come off. Uh, you just got to really play it by ear, but you got to watch it close. And when you've gotten everything you need to get off the pan in the vinegar bath, then it's pretty much, you know, put it back into the lye because it can work on things that were being covered up by crud and seasoning or rust. You can work back in the lye bath and then put it back to the vinegar, just back and forth until it's stripped the best that can be done without damaging the skillet. All right, guys, I will be back after this process has been done and we'll season them up. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I soaked the lodge and this hammered Chicago Hardware Foundry skillet. This is a five and uh, turned out really nice. I uh, coat it with uh, some some uh, cooking spray, uh, grill, master, whatever. It's just, it's not a big deal what kind you use. You just coat it to protect it from flash rust. After you scrub it with the um, scrub pad that I had, it, it is uh, the one with soap in it. Um, you scrub it really good, rinse it out really good, and then once you get most of everything off, you, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure to spread this out even. you got to keep an eye on this. If you're not going to be seasoning these uh, for maybe a day or two, I'm going to try to get to it tonight if the other ones get done. I have an unmarked Wagner number 5 along with the Lodge and the uh, vinegar. I pulled it out of lye. I got that cheap at the thrift store also. Um, but if you're not going to be doing these for a while, they can get really gummy. So you uh, need to scrub it down again so it doesn't, this gummy stuff, wrong seasoning doesn't bake onto the skillet. But I do this just to prevent more rust. So it turned out really nice. That's the hammered section right there. And that's the interior right there. I'm in the dining room, so I just have this coated as it waits for the other two skillets, because I think if you're going to use your oven to 500 degrees, it makes sense if you want to combine it with other skillets. That way you don't waste energy. And it's all about e uh, economies of scale. So this one will be sold. The uh, unmarked Wagner will be sold, and I'm keeping the lodge for myself, because I like that assist handle. Anyway, I wanted to show you where I was at with things, and I will be back. Okay, guys. I just took out this lodge from the vinegar bath down there. Looks pretty uh, yucky, but actually these are good. It's hard to tell. It's kind of dark lighting down here. But it's uh, those are good for a number of months. You just don't want to pour them on the grass, pour them in an area where you can kill weeds or something because it will kill anything it touches. But this is the lodge. Let me take it out so you can better see it. It still has a little bit there along the edge it needs to come off. Another soak. I soak a little bit and scrub, soak and scrub, soak and scrub in the vinegar. You can see the back there, a little bit of discoloring there that needs to come off a little bit more. Now, if one more soak doesn't do it, I'll put it back in lye, soak it for a few hours, and then take it out, and it should be done. But uh, that's what we're looking at, and I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the vinegar for probably another 30 minutes or so, and see what we've got after that and I will be back when I show you when it's finally ready to be seasoned when I put my uh, I, I rinse it scrub it off real good rinse it and then I put some uh, of this on it's actually Crisco cooking pro it's actually made with canola oil now I wouldn't uh, cook with this or anything I just spray it real quick this is perfect for that 
just to prevent the flash rust. And then before you season, you wipe it all off, you warm it up, wipe it all off, make sure it's all off. Heat up your seasons or skillets in the oven, and then you just go about your normal seasoning. So that's what I use to prevent flash rust. It works like a charm. So I will be back when this pan is ready to be seasoned. Okay, guys. Hey guys, I'm back again today. It's November 5th and I've got these all stripped down. Uh, this is the Wagner on mark number five. Again, you can tell. And uh, it turned out pretty good. And here's the lodge I'm keeping for myself. Number eight with an assist handle. And here is the hammered Chicago hardware foundry skillet, which I think those are really cool. I really like them. But I only have so much room. So what I'm going to do is set the camera down. And we're going to season these. And what I'm going to do is um, set my oven at bake. And I'm going to put it at 200. Click start. But before I do that, I'm just going to wipe the pans off of the extra oil that I put on. I just don't want any uneven even this to bake onto the surface so I'm going to wipe it off really good. It kind of soaks into the cast iron because you strip it down to the bare metal and you can see all this stuff that comes off which is normal. People have asked me about that. I always get that. Um, just you know oxidation, oxidation I guess um, with the air and the metal. And that's what eventually leads to rust. But you can see what nice shape it's in. I didn't quite get all the carbon off, uh, the old carbonite seasoning off around the edge, but the old, the new seasoning will cover it up and it will be just fine. So anyway, this is what this one looks like. And that's good enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the oven. And I'm going to let these ba these skillets bake for at least 15 minutes when the oven reaches 200 degrees. So once it reaches 200 degrees, it will beep. And then we'll just go from 15 more minutes. That way, the skillets can heat up enough to soak more oil, seasoning oil. I'm going to use the Easy Beasy seasoning stick. It's the easiest and quickest, especially for skillets like this. And this is what it looks like. Nice, smooth surface. It's going to be gorgeous once it's done. But the, this is how I seasoned cast iron now. I've kind of tweaked it from the early days. I'm going to put that in the oven. Finally, the last skillet, you gotta grab another towel. We're gonna go ahead and wipe the bottom of this one too. This is a Wagner, number five. It was made probably in the 1950s. Um, it just has an E on the bottom and an E on the handle. That's a giveaway that it's definitely a Wagner and the font. If you've been in this long enough, you know by looking at it that it's a Wagner. They're very common. They're not real, that, they're not that rare. Not these, anyway. Uh, the older ones with heat rings and the different logos they had back in the early 1900s, I'd say anywhere from 1900 to 1949, anywhere in there, those are a bit more rare and they are more collectible. But people always like these as a good cooker. Look at that. It turned out really, really great. So I will show you how to season these up. Once these have been in here for at least 15 minutes at 200 degrees, we'll add the real seasoning oil to them. And put them in the oven face down. That's what it looks like face down. And we're going to shut her up and let it go. And I will be back.
Okay, I'm ready to season these. The uh, beeper has gone off. So we're going to get the first one out. And I always start with the cooking surface. And I have my handle gripper and I have my mitt. And I have folded over eight ways my shop towels. I actually get mine at Costco. I like the brand better there. I think it's the, um, I'm trying to remember the brand, Scott, Scott, I think, Scott Towels. And I have another one ready to go, and this one wears out. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and wipe it off any of the other that is pooled. And we're going to go ahead and start with our seasoning stick. So we're just going to put it in there, just get it a head start, and then we'll spread it around with the rag. You want to make sure you get it really good. Really get it on there. You can wipe it off again. Put it over here. So I can reach it easier. I'm going to wipe it all off. And actually, you're not wiping everything off. You're just wiping most of it off that would pool onto the cooking surface and make it look uneven or splotchy. But you just want to get a nice, thin, even layer. And you do that, you don't even have to worry about it dripping in your oven. So we're going to flip it over. And we're going to wipe off the original flash rust prevention oil from yesterday and we're going to coat it with another thin coat of easy beasy seasoning stick this is so easy to use to get it all spread evenly and the modern lodge has the inset heat ring so you just want to make sure you get down in the crevices there for those of you that like lodge I know some hate lodge but actually they're, they're good quality skillets they're heavier which is why I like this with the assist handle um, the one positive thing about a heavier skillet it's going to retain its heat longer when you're cooking and baking with it uh, if you pull something out of the oven and it's going to stay in the skillet for a little bit, it's going to stay warm. Uh, you have a natural warmer with it. The thinner walled ones um, are easier to handle, but they don't retain the heat as long. So there's pros and cons for all kinds of cast iron. Uh, all right, so we got that one done pretty good. And that one's uh, pretty dirty, so we're going to flip it over to the other side. So what's nice about folding these shop towels over uh, just makes them easier to use. Get it all on there, or off, I should say. Okay, it's going to go back in the oven, and we're going to do the other two. So I will do those, and you can just, I'll speed up the tape and you can watch. All right, now that I've gotten them all in there, I'm going to put this up to 350, a little bit hotter, and we're going to let it go 
for about, you know, we're going to let it bake another 15 minutes or so. Well, it's at 350, but I'm going to go ahead and set it for about 20 minutes on the timer. All right, and we're going to, when we take them back out, we're just going to wipe off anything excess that's pooled and then put it back in for an hour at 500. That's what I do, and that seems to work the best. All right. Okay, the timer has gone off. It's time to take the skillets out of the oven and just give them a wipe down. Go ahead and set the tripod there so you guys can see. Now they're pretty hot at this stage uh, and they started to bake on. But you just want to make sure everything is even. You do not add any more seasoning from the first step. You just take it back off. There we go, that one's just fine. Actually, these have, uh, looks like they've done real well. I'm gonna stick that one back in and I'm gonna do the same with the other two. Now they're all back in. We're going to put uh, the oven up to 500 degrees. And to give it time to warm up, we're going to set the timer for about 73 seconds or 73 minutes. And we're going to let them bake in there. And after that, we're going to let them cool down for about 40 minutes. We're going to start the process all over again. I will be back when I'm done after three seasonings. Um, you just do this as often as you want until the skillets look just right for you. And until uh, I'm finished with these skillets, I'll be back. Round one is done. Beeper has gone off, so I will shut it off. And I will shut the oven off. And we're going to do another round. I'm going to do two more rounds. I'm not going to show you those. But this is a hack. So I'm going to set the timer for 40 minutes. And it's going to allow the skillets to cool off enough where I can add a second coat of seasoning. So I can bypass the step of warming up the oven to 200 degrees, letting them sit there for 15 minutes, and then adding the seasoning, putting them back in, heating the oven back up to 350, 300, 350 degrees and letting them bake another 15 minutes and then do the an hour at 500. What this will do is once I add the second coat of seasoning, I add it, wipe it off, put it back in for 15 minutes because the oven will already be at 350 degrees. Let it bake for 350 and you know take them back out after 15 minutes um, and just wipe off the excess seasoning that is pooled and then Put it back up to 500 for another hour, and I'll probably set the timer for, since the oven's already hotter, instead of 73 minutes, I'll probably put it up for 70 minutes or so. But it just saves time, and it's just less work for your oven to heat up and cool off excessively all the time. So that's why I do it this way, and you can do it as many times as you desire for the effect you want on your skillets. Just a hack. All right, I will be back after three seasonings. You can see the final result. Okay, guys, I am back. It is Sunday, November 7th, 2021, and I finished up the, the skillets yesterday. It turned out that they needed a couple more coats after three coats. Actually, this one didn't, That which is the hammered Chicago Hardware Foundry, and this one is Wagnerware. Did not need any more coats. Uh, there was some uh, discoloration along the back there that I didn't quite get off. I really don't feel for my own use that I need it. But it bothered me, so I decided to go ahead and give it another couple of coats, and I figured I might as well throw those guys in the oven. Didn't take much more to do those because the rag was already infused with the oil. So I just want to show you how it turned out. Uh, this is my Wagner, or I'm sorry, my Lodge. Uh, modern Lodge, but you te technically might be vintage. Um, totally stripped it, cleaned it, and reseasoned it, and turned out really, really fantastic. And 
This is the other side, the cooking surface. The assist handle without the font. So between uh, 1998 and 2011 is when it was made, based on that information. And the surface is very smooth compared to the... You can feel it's not as pebbly. It's a little bit pebbly, but it's not as pebbly as the modern stuff. Really, really nice. I'm super excited to have this, and for a little over seven bucks, you can't beat it. Um, and then the next up, we have the Chicago Hardware Foundry Hammered Skillet, number five. And it, too, has five coats. So I lied. I, I, went, I went ahead after the three, and you just do it until you're happy with the result. There's that one. And then the Wagner, unmarked Wagner number five. This is a nice one also. So I'll list these two, and I think this was relatively flat. Doesn't spin. And then this one here is the Chicago Hardware Foundry. Super flat. Very, very, very teeny tiny minimal wobble, which you're gonna get on most of these. So we're all done. I have some pictures here. And if you're watching this uh, late in the game, I really appreciate your support. Thanks again. Please leave, give me a thumb up, leave a question or comment in the remarks, and I'll be back soon.